Okay, another day, another donut. Um, we got all the uh, the light colored chipping and, and scraping uh, done here. Um, it, very much. I'm not. I'm not going crazy in this tank. It looks too cute to really super cover up all the nifty little features and everything. Um, but now we're gonna we're gonna continue. We're just gonna do some dark chipping. Um, it just it just rained cats and dogs over here. Well, not literally, but I love that saying. Rained cats and dogs. Um, we need to do. Oh my god, I'm just out of stuff to say about chipping. Either way, I'm going to get to the chipping, and we'll get to the fun stuff when we, we put on some, some streaking grime, a la, a la Andy. Um, and then, after the streaking grime, a little bit of mud here and there, and maybe rust up the tailpipe, the exhaust a little, and, and then I, I think I think we're done. <clears throat> and we've got, we've got, we've got things in line. We've got, ooh, we've got, we've got a thing from... Uh, uh, uh. I don't know. I might cut that out of the video. Um, we have a we have a package. Oh, it doesn't even matter. It's just we got a package from DKLMRC. Luckily, I had my work address on there, so that really doesn't matter too much. Um, and we got ooh, what's this? A little little MG3 for the uh, Leopard 2A6 that's coming up. Let's put you over there. And we've got. That's some some piano wire. Four two attached to um, uh, uh. these little bad boys. Okay, this is a, the uh, the Acmo design or decal MRC design a replacement for the you know the crappy to me a uh, little nub antennas. So that guy's gonna go away, and in its place we're gonna have one of these nice fellas with a little metal wire antenna on it. That's gonna look good. And then just to return to my Abrams for one sec, I got one more little little treat for it. I got one of those Duke IED antennas for it. I thought I ordered a set of two, but I see the tanks varying between having one of them on there or two of them on there. Either way, the stories from uh, someone, uh, someone I work with who was is, who is, who is in the ish out in Afghanistan said if they forget to turn off their Duke IED antenna scrambling system, they would just start, start frying stuff in the military base. So... Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm just gonna I'm keep adding it on. Like I said, that that is the ghetto rigged um, field upgrade M1A2 uh, SEP ish. And that's about it. We got a bunch of antennas for to me retrofit on all of my old to me tanks. So my old M26 is gonna get one, and uh, my M51 Super Sherman is gonna get one, and this tank's gonna get one. Uh, probably. Replace my botch jobs that I did on the Abrams with a couple of these. So I ordered a whole bunch of those little antennas because they're dirt cheap. Um, shipping was fairly quick from DKLMRC. Um, it wasn't fast by any stretch of the imagination because it's coming from Hong Kong or whatever. Um, and they didn't ship it like DHL or whatnot. But it got here. It got here quick enough. So kind of with the, the dark shipping, you want to kind of hit the areas near where you hit the light shipping as well in any high high wear spots and I, I made myself a fresh piece of foam here just just because I got I got foam if I want to if I want to use it for something I'm gonna use it That'll, there we go so you know chipping 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 uh, if you get a like I said if you get a heavy spot we could just kinda scrape that away and turn it from a chip into a streak and uh, we could do some some gentle, gentle streaks here and there. You know, scratches as they go through things and stuff. And then you know, in the wheels. Either way, uh, I'm gonna do the rest of the dark chipping. Then we're gonna do some grime. Brb. All right, guys, we're back. Um, <clears throat> I it, I mean mostly, most uh, stand up phone. I got I gotta clean this damn workbench up. This thing is, this thing is out of control. <clears throat> so, uh, look at this. Look at this little guy. We've got a little M16 there. I did uh, gunmetal for the upper and lower receiver and for the barrel and uh, flash hider area and uh, front sight post. Uh, the foregrip, uh, hand grip, and buttstock 
are all semi-gloss black. When these guns first came out, now I'm also, I also happen to be a, a, a bit of a firearms enthusiast, and I watch a lot of Forgotten Weapons on YouTube. Very interesting, the stuff that comes up at auctions. But the original stocks and, and grips were made of uh, a substance either called or similar to Bakelite. Um, it was a very shiny, weird, hard plastic that, it wasn't, it wasn't really the greatest plastic in the world, but it's what we had in the 60s. So, um, uh, even probably from the 50s. So, it's Bakelite. So, I, I'm gonna hit this, once this is done, I'm gonna hit it with some, some satin finish clear, the semi-gloss clear, whatever we want to call it. And that'll tone it down a little bit, um, and then I'll, I'll do a little, do a little dusting and weathering, and just a little, beat this gun up a little bit, and lay it up on top of there with the guy. And I got, I got a little box of rations on here, just just for fun, um, but <clears throat> building that little box of stowage is like a whole other project, and I don't even know where I'm going to stow it yet, but this is it. We've got our base paint job. Now, this is flat OD green, XF62, with all our stuff done to it. Just for comparison, this is just a standard to me M1025 Humvee shell done in the same OD green. It's got a natural dusty finish from sitting around for so many years, not ever getting touched or finished or anything done with it, because I never really know what to do with it. Um, this has been a project sitting on the shelf forever. But we went from basically this to this. I mean, uh, it's because we have a shadow coat and a highlight coat underneath here, and uh, then all the weathering. And everything that went into this, um, that's that's what makes a, a, a just this into a completed, she's a tank, baby, well, armored fighting vehicle, whatever. Tactical beer can, tactical beer can. Um, so we got all of our streak and grime on there. It's still got to dry a little bit. Um, we got it in the wheels. I got to do something with the tracks. Um, I have some acrylic mud from MIG. I literally just want to drive it through that mud. I want to just lay that mud out on a cookie sheet of some form or just roll out some aluminum foil on the floor, whatever. Tape it down and then just roll it back and forth through this mud on the tracks. And then when it dries, just drive it around my driveway um, so the concrete naturally scrubs scrubs the mud off the rubber pads and basically leave it like that. But my mud is really... You know, you buy things online... The, the, the computer screen doesn't always translate to real life with what things look like. Um, now, you might think this thing looks like garbage, or you might think it looks amazing. Uh, in real life, it's pretty cool looking. Now, I'm going to hit this with another coat of satin clear to lock in all of our weathering goodness. But, you know, we've got, we've got some good, good amount of ground in there. This side's a little wetter than the other side. I could hear the dog barking upstairs, giving Mama a hard time. Um, I, I felt a little bit leaving her alone up there, but I kind of wanted to get this done. Oh, we got our antenna on. Um, I got to do something about, you know, painting up that spring with something. But these antennas um, are really nice. I mean, they, f they flop around naturally. So as you're driving the tank around, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do like the real thing, which, which is really cool. Um, and you literally just glue it, I mean, these two parts of the spring, they're not even glued together. The tension, the fart parts sit, fit so tight in the, the spring itself, they don't move. Just glue the spring base to the tank, and then slowly squeeze in this piece of piano wire into the little hole that's in the top of here. You might want to drill it out a little if you're really careful. Uh, and then just crazy glue that in there. On the back, um, I started rusting up the tailpipe. I didn't know how far to go with it. I, I got some pigment on there. I got to brush that off when everything's dry. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've got we got quite a few hours into this guy. This was the fastest I have ever, ever built and weathered a tank with and with the driver's figure. Um, the driver figure, he's not glued down. Um, he comes out with the gun. So if I pull the gun out of the pintle, he'll come out with it. I'm going to figure something out to weather him his clothes up a little bit. I, I got to look at how to weather figures, because I've never, like I said, never painted a figure before, um, but there we go, boys, um, I think we're gonna, we're gonna end part 11 on that note, with his little M16, and some rations, and, uh, leave him to his, leave him to his ways, uh, next project, well, 
Let's see what I picked up at the Marine Supply Store today. So, Tamiya no longer sells their clear metal primer. Um, <clears throat> so I got this at West Marine up in uh, Buford, Georgia, near the lake. Um, and this is a green zinc phosphate. It also comes in yellow, but green is apropos because, you know, a lot of military tanks, they start out kind of green. Um, so this stuff, um, I was told to get zinc chromate primer. Now, zinc chromate primer was actually invented, I believe, in the 1920s by Ford Motor Company um, as a rust preventative coating on uh, their original cars they were making. And uh, zinc chromate, unfortunately, it has been used throughout the years for a lot of metal uh, priming and aluminum and you know steel and all those things. It, highly toxic, cancer causing. I mean, even California, we didn't have to like have them convince us. Everybody knows it's cancer causing, so they don't really sell it all that much. You can get it, but it's like kind of few and far between. Uh, zinc phosphate, no chromate. Uh, which chrom the zinc chromate is the cancery stuff. The zinc phosphate is just yeah, wear a mask and you know don't spray it indoors. Um, because we got that 2A6, all those cool metal parts, and the chassis tub was cast aluminum. Um, <clears throat> so a, uh, one of the smart guys on the forums, he said, hey, get some zinc chromate primer, it's going to really stick, it's going to bite into that aluminum really well, so, you know, uh, this guy's built some awesome stuff, so I take his word for it. I'm going to do that, so I got, I got the closest thing I could, um, I hope he doesn't turn, turn his nose down at me, um. But look, it's in a marine store. Okay, this is the primer they sell at the marine supply house. So, if it's good enough to keep paint on an aluminum boat that's sitting in the water 24-7, uh, or possibly goes into salt water, I mean, it's probably a little better than the Krylon or Astolium you're going to get at Wally World or VatoZone. Um, you know, that eh, they, don't sell, they don't sell this stuff. This was $17 a can for this. Not cheap by any means. Not the most expensive thing in the world, but not cheap. Uh, we got two cans of it, just in case, because, hell, I'm going to do more tanks after that tank. And uh, I really have not been happy how Tamiya's white, gray, you know, the normal gray surface primer has been sticking to my metal parts. It really hasn't. It's been chipping and chipping right off. The paint's been just flying off of these parts. And when I used to use the old Tamiya clear stuff to prime them, it never chipped off. Um, so, <clears throat> them saying good for metal, don't, I mean, I'm going to try this out, and we'll, we'll stress test it, because <clears throat> I'm a giant oaf, I'm just a clumsy son of a, and, you know, I, I knock bits of paint off of all parts of this, any, on the chassis and, you know, suspension arms and whatnot, idler, um, track tension adjustments, I've been, I was knocking paint off the thing the whole time, every time I looked at it sideways. But, um, yeah, she's good. If the picture looks different, we did go wider angle for this, this finale shot, because I got a lot closer to the tank with the... Get that can out of the way. There we go. Um, but, yeah, who wants to name the driver? What do we want to name him? We've got to name him. It's the first little man I've built. So, um, let's see. He's a tank commander. So he's got to have something somewhat distinguished, you know, not like Ziggy or Chuck or Ian, you know. He's not going to be Commander Commander Schwartz. No. No, he's not. Hmm. Hmm. We need some thinking juice. Is he, what would his rank be? He wouldn't be a, a captain? No, he'd probably be... He'd probably be a, a, a sergeant, probably a sergeant, or a commit now, yeah, um, sergeant, sergeant, let's call him Wilbur, that, damn it, we'll just call him Wilbur, right, because we can't call him Roger, because then, if he got in the, in the tank, and then you had Victor in there, and then... Uh, yeah, no. And then the last guy's name is, is over. Or on, under. Am I getting into airplane one or airplane two? Over's under. Done? Done's over under and under's over done? I don't even know. I think that was airplane two. I think the airplane one was what, Roger, Roger, what's your vector, Victor? So we're just called Wilbur. Not getting into any of that kind of weirdness. Wilbur. I, I don't think Wilbur. Hey, it's from Mr. Ed. That's it. 
the tank's name is Mr. Ed, and this is Wilbur. And if someone watching this is too young to know Mr. Ed and Wilbur, you're already on YouTube, man. <laughs> if you're watching my video, you definitely got time to kill, so go, go search that junk up and have yourself a chuckle or just scratch your head and be like, the hell were old people watching back in the day? And I'm not even that old, but like, what the hell are the older than me people watching reruns of when they were kids back in the day? Yep. Guys, you're programming these days, you got hundreds and hundreds of channels, you know, we're, we're, we're swinging bunny ear antennas around, we're wrapping aluminum foil around things back in the day, putting a cable box onto the naughty channel and then futzing with the knob on the TV to see a kind of half fuzzy adult image. That, that's as far as I'm going to take that. Um, my mom and dad, I don't know if they knew how we knew that trick. Um, but either way, there we go. Um, I'm calling her done. All right. Out. Wilbur. Sergeant. Sorry, what was, what was Wilbur's last name? I don't know. The next tank we're going to call Curious George. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, we're going to call it Hans. Um, most likely because it's going to be a German tank. And uh, I'm going to if I can find a 1 16th scale little uh, HK MP5, I just want to throw it on there for the heck of it, because I, I love MP5s. Um, but yeah, okay, guys, well, you know, uh, I love the feedback I've been getting, good and, um, uh, what do we, how do you say, constructive from some people. Um, not just on the tank, but on my videos. Um, so keep it coming. Um, I got a thick skin, and sometimes I get a compliment, and it, it's fl very flattering. But yeah, th there we go, Mr. Ed, Mr. Ed the Tank. And Wilbur, his commander, is completed. That's it. Part 11 is over. The series for the M551 Sheridan, unless I come up with some genius idea for more content of doing things to this tank, I mean, other than maybe driving it through... Son of a bitch! There goes a damn mud flap again! Ugh. See, I spoke a little early. I think Wilbur uh, doesn't want... Doesn't want part 11 to be over just quite yet. Yeah, these front mud flaps, guys, these are, uh, yeah, they're not, <laughs> they're not too fond of their homes on the front of this guy slogging through the jungles of, of Nam. Um, oh, come on. Go home, are you, are you too good for your home? There you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good thing I don't drive these hard. Um, if I did, I would probably not use Tamiya cement to put this flap on, even though it should hold it pretty well. I don't know. Either way, um, there's one out there battling. Hopefully it stays in one piece. I Look, uh, other than a couple little odds or ends snapping off, this girl is built solid. I'm very happy with the overall uh, robustness of the model. Um, like I said... You watch all the parts. You know, metal bathtub chassis, metal swing arms, metal suspension mounting points on the outside. Very solid, solid thick plastic ones on the inside. Metal crossbars. The the front the front uh, uh, idler wheels have metal arms that mount into metal arms that are sandwiched between two more pieces of metal. She's really she's a stout little girl as far as the chassis, the drivetrain goes, and uh, you know everything else on it. It just works beautifully. So, yep, she is good to go. Um, I maybe, I, I guess just one last little, one last little, uh, startup and special effects demo. And then, then we're done. Done, done. Keep saying we're done. searchlight will light up a room in pitch black like if you had a blackout you could literally you could literally follow this tank around the house and and find your way through it's pretty cool um, you could actually I mean if you stuck a GoPro on this thing at night um, 
and turned on those lights, it, it would be pretty cool. It would be like a little movie there. But either way, um, so she is, she's done. She's going to go on a shelf <laughs> with all my other builds. Um, and and we're going we're gonna to clean this entire disaster area up um, because the next tank is is a big, big, she's a, she's a fatty. She's a, just a big fat pig. Hold on a second. I got to make room on the, uh. Oh my God, where do I, I'm going to squeeze him in between, oh, I put him right between my, put him right between my N51 and my M26, which were the first two tanks I ever built, and he makes their paint jobs look like, look like hot trash, I'll tell you that right now. Um, if we, sorry if anyone gets uh, a little vertigo here, let's just... Get this tripod adjusted. There we go. There we are. Let's get that out of the way. Make some room here. Alright. Here. Here's what's coming up next. Oh, this thing's too big. I can't even... Ah! Oh, there we go. That's what's next. Yep. There. There she is. So, I'm... Guys, I am not starting this thing tomorrow. But plenty of people have seen this built already. So it's not like it's all new and exciting and never done before like the uh, Sheridan. So I'm going to take my time with this. I'm probably going to record a lot and not actually upload it and share it with the world until I just have like most of it done, I think. Um... But, uh, yeah, so that's, that's that. Okay, terrific. All right. <clears throat> so, there we go. We're all done. <sighs> Time! All right, that was a record, by the way, guys. You just watched a record-setting build for me. Considering I have a full-time job. Mmm... And somewhat of a home life, and somewhat, for a person like me, somewhat of a social life. Um, so evenings get eaten up here and there with, with socializing and going places, weekends with chores and errands and things. Um, but yeah, unboxing video was filmed on July 3rd, and now the end of this was filmed somewhat before 10 p.m. on July 30th. So, less than 30 days. Now, Andy, <laughs> he has the best full-time job to do something like this. He works in a hobby. He owns a hobby shop. He's, he's there every day, all day. And hobby shops, a lot of times, it, it, it's not even a hobby shop, hobby shop. He runs a model shop. Like, he specializes in modeling and just scale modeling. And that's about it. Um, a hobby shop, you're getting every idiot in five minutes, every, oh, one that comes in ten minutes later, ah, oh, my T-Max is broken, my Revo is blah, 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 you have any 3S LiPos for my super kilovolt brushless thing that I crashed and I'm gonna, no, it's not like your normal hobby shop, they're teeming with, teeming with the brain dead RTRs. Uh, apologies, you know, RTR is fine. If it gets someone into the hobby and makes them want to build something like a Tamiya kit, then I'm all for, uh, for RTR, you know, RC models. Um, some people, they start with something like a hang long, and they go, wow, you know, this is pretty cool. And then they see it to me, and they're like, wow, look at the detail on that. That's a little nicer. Um, I like, look at the little machine gun. It's, it's all detailed. It's not just a block of plastic. Oh, yeah, actually, look at these the paint colors, rubber tires, all these little rubber tires. What's photo etched metal? Oh, my God, that's photo etched metal. Wow, no wonder the grills look so good on that. If it gets them in there... I'm happy for it. Thank you, Heng Long. If anything, I think you've increased to me as tank sales. Because I think so many people that were maybe thinking of getting into the RC tank hobby, there was only kits. Because you guys were the only game in town. Really. 
serious game in town, you know, I mean, there was been Nikos and Tycos and all sorts of, you know, Radio Shack toys over the years, but really cool looking tank, like a legit looking tank, people see that, they see a giant price tag, they see you have to build the whole thing, they don't know what the hell they're doing, they're like, they move along, I'll go get the T-Max, so, there's that, and they never did an expert built series tank, I wonder why, I think it would cost like $3,500 MSRP, at least, there's no easy way to build these things. So, then comes along the Henglong, Taigen, Toro, you know, those guys. And initially, you know, some of the stuff was just, it was just garbagey. Then I saw the M1, I bought it, because I didn't think to me I had an M1 at the time. Turns out they did. I was just a fool. I was hoping for years they would make one. Years. So I got this, this Henglong, and I looked at it, and since I started it to me, uh, there's Henglong. I was like, where, where's the clear glass for the windows? There's just giant gaping holes everywhere. What's this 50 cal? This is a, this looks like it came off a G.I. Joe vehicle of the 80s. You know, I see all these things and, <clears throat> you know, some of the other parts. And I'm like, the clip-on bits and nothing really fits right, nothing lines up right. And I'm like, ugh. I go online and I see this huge group of people that are just fixing up <clears throat> hanglongs. And, I, I mean, I swear to God, I've seen plenty of hanglongs. I can't tell the difference if it's a Tamiya or a hanglong. Or a scratch-built masterpiece. I don't know. But uh, I think I think this whole uh, spike in popularity of these of these ready-to-run tanks, and then the people get the itch, and they like they just want better and newer and nicer and, and cooler, and or just want more challenge of building the whole thing yourself. Knowing whose hands put it together and what pieces went in, and you know you could touch and feel the quality of every part, and if something's not great... There's a lot of upgrades for things that, even to me, it doesn't always make the best of everything sometimes. So, um, so that gets in building. So, I, I have a funny feeling, and people on the forums are very negative sometimes with their, their opinions on Tamiya and their tank products and the future. I think they're going to keep coming out with tanks, and I don't think they want to compete with Hang Long. I don't think they care about Hang Long. I think they're like, well... They're on a completely different playing field than we are. So if we make something unique, then we've got this. And if we make something that they already make, yeah, maybe not. But if they copy something we've made, big, what can we do about it? So to me, it's going to get interesting. I think I would be most excited for a few different tanks from Tamiya. And they already have molds for probably all of these in 135th scale. So they could probably not too hard and, and, and scale these up. Uh, obviously, there's a lot more engineering and, and software, you know, CAD usage and, and other things that go into these. I would love to see a French Leclerc, or as they say in the Bronx, Leclerc, because that's how it's spelled. Leclerc. Um, no, yeah, a French Leclerc, 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 whatever you want to say. One of those, those are cool. Um, I'd love to see a Merkava. I'd love to see a Merkava, a Magach, or even just a nice M60, you know, variant of some form. That would be really cool. Um, hell, a multi-launch rocket system. I don't care. Come up with something, Tamiya. Keep them coming, because we'll keep buying them. So you've got until uh, the, the, you know, Shizuoka 2020 hobby show. I want, I want to see another cool tank um, because we're all waiting here with our credit cards. Uh, AAF Tank Museum had like 25 in their first batch. All those all sold before they even arrived at the Tank Museum. Those were pre-ordered out the door right away. I know to me, uh, you know, if they sell hundreds of these, okay, that's, that's fine. I don't know how much it costs to design and build this thing, but if they already had the 35th scale model and a certain amount of this engineering is already done because... They've made so many tanks before, it's it's not that hard for them. They reuse a lot of internal bits and, and you know, servo mounts and things and gun recoil systems. And This one had a cool recoil system, too. First servo mounted one. Um, but, yeah, keep them coming. I want more tanks. I want more tanks. I mean, there's more... There's, yeah, I got... I, yeah. There's still a bunch I haven't built that they've already made, but, um, you know, those are sometimes before my time. Or reissue the damn... The Flak Panzer... As a modern full option kit, reissue the Leopard A5 as a full option modern kit. You've done it before. You had like the King Tiger or something with the Porsche turret, or was a Henschel turret, 
or is that a production turret? The Henschel turrets, the production turret, the Porsche turrets, the early, th- whatever. But they had like a basic RC version of it that didn't have any sounds, lights, you know, or or special effects wise, and it just drove around. And he had like turret rotation. I think that was about it. And then they re-released it as a full option kit. Keep it coming. Try it again. I mean, the M4. Sure, that originally wasn't a full option. It was just an RC tank. Or tank suitable for radio control. Kind of like that uh, tuna fish at the Bronx Public Schools uh, I saw once when I was picking up a birthday cake from the cafeteria. It said on the big can, this can was like a number 10 can, as big. It said, it said fish product may be used uh, as tuna salad. So, uh, suitable for tuna salad use, whatever. Uh, safe for human consumption was written on it. That was interesting. But either way, um, I just wanted to fill in part 11 here with, with a little bit about the industry and the hobby as a whole with as far as RC tanks and all that. My personal blah, 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 just to annoy that one guy who said I, I B-I-T-C-H too much. Kiss my butt. I don't care. Um, these are my videos. I don't see you making any videos, buddy. Um, 501 Sheridan. Thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. I don't care. I get some thumbs down, apparently. <clears throat> but either way, mostly thumbs ups. Uh, I like what I'm saying. So, I'm going to keep this up. Um, you know, my, my subscriber base of 44, if it was 10,044, um, I could start selling some t-shirts probably. But it's 44. We're not going to Teespring just yet. Calm down. Okay? Uh, Vista Print is not getting any business from me as of right now. But um, Leopard 2A6 build coming up. After that, I'm keeping an eye on something online. I'm not going to let that cat out of the bag, but uh, I may have yet another tank coming after the 2A6. And then there's there's still that Russian JS2 I want. So hopefully for Christmas, the wife's very nice to me and gets me that nice Russian JS2. I love that tank. It looks very cool. It looks very Russian. I don't have any Russian armor at all, so I, I'd look forward to building that. But either way, this is it. Signing off, guys. See you next whenever.